Hi guys. So today um, uh, we are going to discuss the uh, FIS 2.0 application deployment in OpenShift standalone environment uh, that is known as Minishift as well. So uh, Minishift provides you a uh, you know uh, a very similar feel and environment uh, uh, like OpenShift. The benefit is you know, uh, developers can easily set up this manuscript in their environment and easily can they, uh, they can develop, deploy and test the uh, application. So mm, uh, yeah, it is it is quite it is a boon for developers and it is very popular as well, manuscript. So it is also known as open service standalone environment and uh, it can it can be easily set up in a in, in a local environment, uh, in a local laptop. So currently, I'm uh, I have installed this in my laptop, and uh, yeah, I'm going to show you this presentation on uh, Minishift itself. So uh, what my major focus here is like uh, uh, in earlier sessions as well, um, uh, we were able to deploy uh, FIS based application in uh, Minishift or Minikube. So right now, my major focus would be on you know uh, the memory configuration how we can provide a provide memory or cpu resources to put uh, to the container uh, because uh, you know this is a crucial um, because for every container uh, if container are using uh, some memory configuration which are quite high or quite low then it becomes difficult you know to uh, manage them so it it is always suggested to provide some configurations to uh, some memory related configuration to your po pods so that you utilize your system resources in a better way so uh, yeah so uh, right now what I am doing here I have this FIS screen boot I already have an application in my IDE as well so this is FIS screen boot application this is the simplest uh, application which you will find in the Red Hat documentation for uh, FIS 2.0 application. So uh, we will just check the route. If should this is a route which which have a timer uh, which prints in every two seconds. And what does it print? The my transformer method is there. It prints yeah component value my transformer. It prints a, a random value. It just prints a random value uh, every two seconds. Uh, yeah, print the uh, message body and body is made up of a random number. So that's it, uh, and yeah, the other thing uh, is memory-related configuration is deployment dot YAML file. See, the folder structure is within SRC within main when then fabricate deployment dot YAML. So uh, by default, these memory configurations are commented. Okay, so let us as well comment it out because by default it is commented. So we will comment it out. And we will deploy an application. Okay, so let us check first. Mm, yeah, so it is commented. And the other thing, you know, if if we notice, here yeah, I don't have anything in ports. There is nothing in DC as well. And if you see Docker, yeah. So I have commented it out, and I will ta also show you the output of Docker. PS. What are the current Docker containers? So this is the one container. I I want you to focus on this this container. This is test FIS Spring Boot. So right now this test is it's a different project uh, right now. So mm, uh, different project altogether. So what I am doing right now I will deploy it in a different project. That is my project. So let me show you uh, how it is. So minisafe console yeah so my project so currently this is my project in which i will be deploying the uh, uh, fis based application so this test this test is for another user so for this user my project is the actual project where images will be deployed so okay so uh yeah so let me build this application build this application now okay yeah we have to go to pom dot 
xml location now we, we are in the location where pom.xml is there so we will build an application here so guys let it build uh, i am going to discuss you about you know this memory and this memory what are these used for if you see here in the resources tag we have two tags two sub tags request and limits this request is uh, whenever a container will start it will you know allocate this much of cpu resource and this much of memory resource by default to the container okay and limit is something you uh, you can say th this is the max limit which uh, which can uh, which uh, which can be further utilized by the uh, container if this memory if these limits are not if these request requested uh, resources are not enough so let's say if i provide memory is equal to 256 uh, mi mi is million bytes so it is uh, almost similar to uh, megabytes so when i provide this 256 means at the start only my application my container would be having 256 of megabyte image okay megabyte it can it would be using heap memory so uh, but it can further extend to 384 mi bytes so not more than that so why we pro why i am providing different value because uh, let's say th this is by default being used by the container if it needs more it will utilize till 384 if if it doesn't need more then the available memory like, like the available memory is difference of 384 minus 256 that is 128 this 128 would be used by a would can be used by a different container so that means uh, this remaining memory would be available to different containers as well so they, they can also use it so yeah this is a better system a better resource utilization and same stands for cp02 it means that 02 fragment is always allocated for this image okay but if it need more cp utilization okay then it can take you know one unit of cpu so that's what i wanted to you know uh, explain you here and that uh, this is a very important uh, configuration so uh, just remember this deployment dot yml exists within src data and fabricate now uh, yeah image is built so let me show you now output of pods yeah we have pods ready okay uh, pod it is ready and this this is the pod and uh, we have the uh, this this as well ready this deployment is also ready so let us ch check logs first if, if it is printing or not yeah this pod yeah oc logs and pod name so pod name is this so see it has started printing okay and uh, now we will check uh, uh, yeah docker ps what processes are running so as I told you that I am working on my project so this current image is being created on my project so the important point is you know to notice the important point to notice is this container ID please check focus on this 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 starts with 25 and, and it is 4d it is starts with 25 and ends with 4d1 so docker ps this, this command is very interesting okay docker states so it will provide me the memory utilization okay so right now as i discussed we haven't used any memory configuration we comment we comment we were using the default configuration which I, which is being provided by the fis 2.0 so in default configuration there is no memory related configuration being provided so if i am saying this i yeah so i told you to focus on this the this image which this container id which is being uh, which is using this image okay so this one this image i pushed so 24th this one okay so it use currently 0 0.24 okay memory uses is 357 it is using current uses is 357 and limit is 
1.955 GIB. So around 2 GB, around 2 GB of memory is being allocated for this container. Okay. So yeah. Mm. That's interesting. Means I haven't provided any, uh, you know, limit. Uh, let me show you this again. Yeah, it was commented out. So no memory limits were provided. No request. None. Uh, I haven't requested any memory. No, not I have pro uh, configured any limit. So by default, it is taking, you know, two GB as a limit. And uh, yeah. So. Uh, what what we understood from here is that there is no upper limit okay so if a container is started without any memory configuration then it it is up to uh, the container it can take it can take your complete ram as well okay so it is always suggested you know to uh, provide some configuration so that your system resources can be better util utilized same stands for c utilization so yeah that's it that's that's what I wanted to explain you here uh, so now what I what I will do I will uh, rebuild the image okay uh, what I will do I will rebuild the image I will comment it out uh, I will remove the commented section yeah okay commented section is being removed and I will rebuild the image Okay, let's say OC get pots. Fabric MVM Fabric 8. Yeah, other thing I wanted to tell you here how we uh, so this one we checked in Docker uh, stacks command we can view the memory utilization and CPU utilization. Uh, using OC command as well, we can you know view the current configuration which we have set. So current configuration is DC, FIS, Spring, Boot. Yeah. So if you see here, uh, limit is CPU one unit is provided, and requested is 200 M means it is the uh, 200 uh, you can say point 0.2 fragment of one unit okay and uh, there is no configuration related to memory because we haven't set any that what I was trying to uh, explain here so there is no memory related configuration so what we are going to do now we are building it again okay so just note here once we get pause it was okay Yeah. It, it, it is pushing image. Yeah. Yes. So yes. We have one more here. This one. Let me check again. Get pots get pods uh, it should be in running state currently three dot deploy is in running state uh, so deploy is uh, you can temporary uh, pod which is created while deploy uh, while deployment we should be uh, uh, having this uh, later in a ready state ready means this this one this zero should be set to one let us check again yes so see uh, the earlier image boot one it is it is being removed three dot deploy as i said it was temporary it is being removed now we have a latest image a latest image a latest pod i i should say yeah so now we would see here okay now again see the deployment now it is interesting see cpu is again 200 amp and memory is being configured to 256 which we set here see this okay so limit is 384 which we set here limit limit memory and this is the request which is 256 we said so now we saw that it is being created 
get pods let us see the logs of this pod okay some problem here oc logs yeah so see a random number is being printed it would be printed in every 2 second so let me show you again yeah, 998c50 uh, this is 59 and after 2 seconds it again printed the uh, uh, random number so that's what that uh, again yeah now we will check the output of docker ps let's see this was the image okay which we just created 2 minutes before okay container id starts with 5f and ends with tgo so docker uh, stats will check yeah and starts with 5f and with tgo see memory use is 246 mib and limit is 380 this what i was uh, uh, you know trying to focus on more because uh, using docker stats we can easily analyze the memory utilization by our container okay mm, yeah so th this was one one point which i wanted to make yeah firstly we should always configure memory limit because if we don't uh, provide memory limit then by default FIS image will take you know uh, will take uh, uh, there is as there is no upper limit of uh, uh, how much it will take RAM so it might take your complete RAM as well so it might affect your overall process and uh, you might not be able to run other processes or other containers so it is always better to you know uh, provide some memory configurations yeah uh, you, you could say that how can I assume that how much memory it will take for first time you can run it uh, without any default uh, without any memory configuration once you are sure that once you are aware that this much memory would be needed later you should you must configure memory configuration to have a uh, better memory utilization so let me tell you a few more things request as I told you is 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 the uh, request tag is the one which we are requesting at the start time so this much memory and this much CPU would be allocated at the start time only okay and the limits would be something you know till which limit the CPU utilization and memory utilization can extend so till 384 mi it, it, it can extend not more than that similarly CPU 1.0 unit would be uh, provided at max to this container if it requires more the advantage is uh, 256 and 384 is that the difference can be used by the other container if this container was, is not using the uh, is just using 256 mi or less than it not more than this so the remaining can be can be utilized by the other container so it is used for better memory utilization you can still provide same value if you provide same value here in memory and in, uh, in request memory requested memory and limit memory then uh, that memory will be allocated to the container and container or, or the port and port will not never you know never change that limit uh, means that memory will be only allocated for that container now other containers or other processes cannot utilize that memory so yeah so let me show you now uh, what mistake I did earlier uh, when I wasn't aware about these uh, these uh, you know uh, troubleshooting steps. So earlier uh, what I did I used to um, go to the container OC get pods okay OC RSH. I so what I am trying to do I'm going the under I am logging into the underneath console so underneath uh, operating system so if we see here underneath means the uh, the underneath o operating system used by this image FIS image so let me show you cat PC red hat release so this is sent over 
so cent os is the underneath os so yeah you can uh, some people also you know who who have more um, expertise on linux they will directly use this command okay free display results in mb so if you see here total is 2 gb used is 961 and free is 463 463 mb and if you see here mm, they they might also use top command what top command shows is in kilobyte this much is total and this much is free so uh, uh, so these figures which are displayed by top and free commands are you know not very useful when we discuss about uh, when we uh, talk about open sets and the parts uh, uh, and the images so we shouldn't rely much on the commands available uh, within the underneath os we should either use the any third party monitoring tool which can monitor our um, uh, which can monitor our open set pods or open set images and uh, or we should use the docker stat command as i used to monitor the memory utilization or you can use the open set gui as well there as well you can find the uh, memory how much memory is being utilized so uh, that was all i wanted to discuss with you today so i think this this uh, would would really uh, this would help you to understand uh, how to configure memory related configurations within fis 2.0 image so that's all for today guys so i believe uh, uh, you would have enjoyed it thanks man thanks thanks guys thanks a lot for joining